Hi folks, my name is Chris Skinner from VMware Education Services. In today's segment, we'll be looking at installing VMware ESXi 5. As with any software or operating system, there are hardware requirements necessary for a successful installation. One of the primary elements that we need to know about ESXi 5 now is it's a 64-bit only processor operating system. In addition to that, there are some minimum memory requirements. Naturally, we'll need some Ethernet connectivity, as well as some local storage and or SAN storage for an installation. During the installation process, there are a number of options you'll be prompted for. Some of these are required. Some of these are optional. Some of these are provided with default selections already. Others, you can choose to make changes as you do the installation. When you install ESXi, start by downloading the operating system from the website, burn it to a CD-ROM or DVD media, mount that DVD media into the ESXi machine target server, and boot. You will need to choose any unformatted or non-VMFS storage partition to do a successful installation. Additionally, VMware ESXi does provide us the ability to also do a boot from SAN in the event that you have a diskless server or diskless workstation. This is a fully supported solution and can be done fairly easily. Next segment, we're going to be looking at doing an installation of the ESXi in a live demonstration. Okay, we've mounted the DVD into the ESX server. We've booted it up. We're given two choices here for the installation process. We can go forward with the initial boot from the local disk itself, or we can choose to do the installation. You're given about a five to eight second delay to make a selection choice here. If you choose not to select something in timeout, it will default to the installer, as you can see on the top here. We're gonna press enter. You will now notice that we are loading and unpacking the files from the CD-ROM to the local disk. Uh, these files will take just a few minutes to go through and unpack, and then the installation will continue. Next, we see the screen that's doing the initialization. It also shows me the build release number, shows me the number of processors or CPUs and their speed, and the amount of memory that's installed into this physical server. Next, we see the installation welcome screen. Of course, the part of the screen also identifies a web location in which you can go to the VMware site and look at the compatibility guide, which will show a complete list of all of the hardware and or supported software requirements necessarily for ESXi 5. We're going to press enter to continue with the installation. There is, of course, an end user license agreement that you will need to uh, accept. We do this by pressing F11. Next, ESXi will be scanning for local targets and or server-based targets that we can use to do the installation. Here we've selected the local disk. That is an indication by the yellow highlight here. Uh, we're going to do a local installation of ESXi here, so simply pressing Enter will allow us to continue to the next phase. As you can see here that we have an existing VMFS partition available to us. Uh, we could choose to do an upgrade of an existing ESXi server if necessary, or we can completely blow away the server and do an overwrite of that existing VMFS data store. Uh, we're going to choose a clean installation and completely overwrite the VMFS data store. Simply pressing the down arrow and then the space bar to toggle that box will allow us to make that option. Press OK, uh, Enter to OK. We will also be given a number of options around the type of keyboard layout for this installation. Uh, for this particular demonstration, we're going to use the US default by simply pressing Enter. Next screen is the password screen, although technically not required for an ESX server. It is highly recommended that you enter a password, ideally a complex password for the ESX server. So it is an eight character minimum. So we're going to enter a password in here. And from that point, we simply press enter to continue on. Again, we're scanning the system. This may take a couple of minutes. 
Okay, now you see a confirm installation screen here. It says it's about to do an installation on the target disk that you've selected. It is also a warning message here that we will completely repartition and reformat this target disk. Again, to accept that and press on, we press 11. As you can see, the installation is now complete and ESX5 has been installed successfully. Remove the disk from the server and at this point simply press enter to do a reboot. And you will see the ESX server now booting up and unpacking its file from the local disk. As you can see, you have successfully installed your first ESXi server. To manage this host, you can simply open a browser to the IP address indicated below. And of course, you can also customize as well as change some of the shutdown startup options available as well. This concludes the demonstration of our VMware ESXi 5.0 installation. For more information about vSphere infrastructure, go to VMware Education Services on the web. VMware Education Services provides training in over 500 centers in 60 countries. This is delivered both by VMware Direct as well as our partners authorized training centers. You can take classes in an instructor-led classroom environment. Class can also be delivered remotely via live online. We also have private on-site capability as well as a number of free e-learning modules that are available on our website as well. You can find us online at any of the links listed below.